What is going on guys, welcome back to the Python Tips and Tricks tutorial series. In today's video we're going to learn about interesting ways to figure out how many digits a number has in Python. So let us get right into it. So maybe you'll think that this video is kind of trivial because who cares about how many digits a number has and even if I care about it, isn't there a very simple way to do it? Why should I learn about additional ways? And I'm going to answer that question in a second, but for now let's focus on the most simple way that probably all of you are thinking of right now. Let's say we have one, nine, two, three, three, four, seven, six, five, five, one, two, three. This is the number and want to know how many digits it has. Now the very simple way to do this is to just say digit amount equals and then we say length of the string of the number. So we essentially just typecast this number here into a string and then we count the characters. It's a very simple thing. Of course it works. We can just go ahead and say digit amount. And it's not a bad way to do it. It has 13 digits. Let's see if that's two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. Yes, uh, so we have 13 digits here and this is what we get. And this is a perfectly valid way to count the amount of digits and sometimes even more accurate than other ways. But sometimes maybe in a coding challenge, maybe in a coding interview, or maybe even due to limitations on hardware or software or whatever reason you have, maybe you're not allowed to typecast. And if you're not allowed to typecast, there are also other ways that I'm going to show you uh, that you can use in order to figure out how many digits a number has in Python. So let's say we're actually not allowed to use typecasting, we cannot transform this number into a string, how can we figure out how many digits it has. Now since we're in the decimal system, it's very simple because what does What's, what does that number even mean? It means three times one, two times 10, one times 100, and so on. And because of that, we can just use the logarithmic function, which is part of the math module, which we're going to import now, import math, we can use the logarithmic function base 10 in order to figure out how many times do I need to multiply 10 by itself in order to get to this number. Now, um, if I go ahead and just print math.log10 of number, we're going to get a value, but this value is a floating point number. And the problem with that is that it's not going to have the amount of digits exactly what we need to do is we need to cut off the decimal places. So we're going to type cast it into an integer. And then we're going to add one. And then we get the right number. So we get 13 because we have 13 digits here, I can add two more and we get 15. Uh, and this is how it works with the logarithmic function because the logarithmic function essentially asks how many times can I divide this number by 10 in order to, um, or not in order to, but but how many times can I divide it by 10 uh, to reach one. So 10 to the power of what is this number. And of course, we're not going to get an exact number here. Uh, or actually, we're going to get the exact number here, but we're not interested in the exact number. We're interested in the number plus one, the number rounded down plus one, uh, because that's the amount of digits. Now, the problem with this approach is we have two problems here. And the first problem is a very, very uh, obvious problem. We can do this with this number, we can do it with 12. Uh, we're going to get two, we can do it with one, but we cannot do it with zero. We cannot do it with zero because it's not defined for zero. W what is zero like 10 to the power of what is zero, we cannot get anything. If, if you go with 10 to the power of zero, we get one, if you get 10 to the power of one, uh, you get uh, you get 10, you don't get to the number zero. So it's not defined for the number zero. So this approach uh, works not for zero, but it also doesn't work for minus 10. Because I cannot get there. So if we have zero or a negative number, we just need to add some exceptions here. Uh, so we're going to say if the number is larger than zero, we're just going to say print math or actually int math dot log 10 of the number and the result that we get plus one. So if else if if the number is less than zero, we're going to say math dot lock 10. And we're going to say it's the negative number. So we're going to say just minus number. Because of course, you know, we don't care about the logarithm, we care about the amount of digits and the amount of a negative number, the, the amount of digits in a negative number is the same amount as in a positive number. Um, except for of course, if you want to count in the the negative prefix here, of course, um, 
but other than that, it's the same number, right? So we can actually go ahead and do the same thing here. Let's say we have minus 10. And we're still going to get two here because all we need to do is we need to remove the minus by adding another minus. And then we get just the logarithm base 10 of the number 10 or of the number 1090, for example. And then we add one as always, if you want to add uh, one more for the prefix, you also can just add two because you know, maybe you say this is also a digit, even if it's not, it's just a position. Um, and if the number else, if the number is exactly zero, we're just going to say one, because that's what it is. Zero is one digit. And doing that, it also works. As you can see. Now, you might be surprised to hear that this is still not perfect, because it can still fail. But how can it fail? It works for larger than zero, it works for less than zero, it works for zero. So how can it fail? And it fails because of a subtlety in computer science that if you're studying computer science, you probably have already heard about it, uh, is computers don't represent floating point numbers in an accurate way. I'm not going to tell you the, all the details of why this is and how this works. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments, I can make a video about it. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that. Now, the fact is that computers cannot represent floating point numbers accurately. And because of that, if we get a number like this one here, a lot of nines followed by seven or something, it's going to round it up to the next larger number. So it's not going to represent this number, it's going to represent uh, a larger number. And because of that, we're going to get an extra digit, it's not going to be an accurate representation. So what can happen is, uh, let's go ahead and print the string, the length of the string, because this is still accurate, of course, this is not biased by that floating point representation. If we get the string, if, if we do it like that, the length of the string, we get 19. If we do it with this logarithmic method, we get 20, because it's rounding out the floating point numbers that we get from the logarithmic result. Uh, so this solution here is not perfect, it works for a lot of numbers. But if you have numbers like this one here, it's not going to work, as you can see. So it's going to round up to the next uh, to the next number or to the next whole number. And because of that, we're going to get one extra digit, and it's not going to be an accurate representation. And you cannot also you can also not just go ahead and sometimes subtract one sometimes not because if the number is a normal number, like this one here, we're going to get the same results. Actually, you can see seven and seven, even though I didn't change the code at all. But if we have something like this, it's going to give you an error, we get 17 and 18. So it's not going to be the same as you can see. So in order in order to counteract that we can use a different method here. Uh, using a counter, we can say we start by counting, uh, we start a counter at one, and then we say, while the absolute value of our number is larger or equal to 10 to the power of our counter, what we're going to do is, we're just going to increase the counter. It's a very simple thing. Think about it. What it does is it says, okay, we have the number, only the absolute value, by the way, so we're not interested in, uh, in, in the prefix or something, uh, we just take the absolute value. And as long as this value is larger than 10 to the power of one, then 10 to the power of two, and so on, we're going to increase the counter until we get to 10 to the power of something uh, that is uh, larger, or I uh, know, actually larger, than the absolute value of that number. And this is actually the same thing as taking the logarithm, but we avoid floating point numbers. And thus we counteract the error. And by doing that, we can just end up printing the counter. And you're going to see that we end up with 17. And let's compare that with the string method, length of the string of the number. And you can see that it works for this as well. So it works for I think it should work for zero. Please don't disappoint me. It works for zero. Yes, it works for 55. Of course, it works for any number. Actually, it also works for negative numbers. Of course, you can add an if if you want to add the prefix as well. Oh, it does not work. Oh, of course, it works. Uh, but uh, the string is calculating the prefix uh, as well. Because if you have the string, if you have the string, you also count this thing here. So if you don't want to do this, you need to subtract one, depending on if the number is negative or not. Uh, but it still works depending on what kind of solution you want. If you want to count a prefix or not, uh, you can adjust that. But mathematically, it works, it will always give you the good result or the right result, we can add a lot of nines here. 
and it will still work because it's not prone to floating point representation errors. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click the notification bell to not miss a future video. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.